In this video, let's go spearfishing off one of the ocean beaches, targeting flathead, and then cook them up and make some fish tacos in the second half of the video. When searching for flathead, I like to find the areas right on that fringe of sand and rocks. The flathead like to bury themselves in the sand and right on that edge of the rocks, there's generally a lot of bait fish. I just saw some whiting in the distance. So what I'm going to try and do is just flick up the sand and sometimes when you do that the whiting get curious and they come in a little bit closer looking for worms or something that's underneath the sand. Almost had a shot on that one but not quite so I didn't pull the trigger. There's also some other things buried in the sand that you need to be careful of. This is a shovel nosed ray. You can see it there, it's fully buried. There are stingrays too, so you need to be careful of those. This is an Eastern Fiddler ray. Just touch the sand next to the ray so that you can have a good look at it. Really beautiful ray. We'll leave that one alone. This is a southern eagle ray. Another beautiful ray. Exploring and looking in some caves, I found a wobbegong shark. You can see it there sitting on the bottom. Just on the sand there. couple of weirs swimming out of there as well. A nice big eastern blue groper. This is the New South Wales state emblem fish and they're illegal to spearfish so let this one swim off. Going out into the deeper water I found three Samson fish and one of my friends had actually shot one of them. There were four in that school. They're pretty flighty and they're not letting me get close even though I'm trying to look the opposite direction and keep my distance, swimming parallel to them. Back on the inside, I found a little dusky flathead. This one's just over legal, around the 37, 38 centimeter mark. When they're out in the open like that and they're really easy to spot, generally, if you dive down on it, it's going to get spooked. You can see as I started to get closer to it, it started to move. Cool to just watch as they settle back down. This one's trying to do a little shimmy and bury itself in the sand but it realised that it was over a rock. There we go, the disappearing act. Such a cool little shimmy. I did find another one which was a bit bigger close by. Often you'll find flathead together, so if you see one, it's worth scouting around the area. This one's highly camouflaged next to the rock. See it there at the end of the tip of the spear gun? It's a good size flathead for fish tacos. Flathead are one of my favourite fish to eat, so we'll take this one home and cook it up. Once you've filleted the fish, it's really important to check for bones. 
I'm going to cut these up into bite-sized chunks, which I'm then going to panko breadcrumb and fry, which will then go into the fish tacos. And if there's bones in there, then when you put it in the fish tacos, obviously someone's going to get a bone and they're not going to be happy. So I cut it up into bite-sized chunks, all the while just really making sure that there are no bones in there. Flathead is one of my favourite fish for fish tacos. It's just perfect. Perfect texture, really moist, absolutely delicious. Once I've cut the fish up, the next step is to mix up some eggs and then coat the fish in some panko breadcrumbs. I've been recycling some udon noodle bowls and what I do with these is put some flour in there and that's going to be the first step to making the panko breadcrumb coating on the outside and then add panko breadcrumbs to another bowl and what this means is that you can actually put the fish in there and shake it up and it coats it really quickly, saves you a lot of time. I'll show you how that's done in a second. So first get the flour get some pieces of the flathead and drop them in there. Then put the lid on and start shaking it up. This is a really easy way to coat the fish in flour. Once the fish is coated in flour, the next step is the egg. You could probably shake these up too, but I usually just mix it in a bowl. The flour helps the egg stick to the fish and in turn the egg's going to help the panko breadcrumbs stick to the flathead. So just give it a good coating of egg. Next step is panko breadcrumbs. So just drop each piece in the bowl. Just got to make sure that there's enough room in there so that when you shake it that they're all going to get coated and not stick together. Put the lid on to stop the spillage and then give it a good shake. And voila! What you get is these nice little coated pieces that are going to be ready for the deep fryer. Beautiful little bits. Next step is to put them in the deep fryer. I've heated the oil to 160 degrees. While that's cooking, Start chopping up some pineapple and making the salsa. Also some sides like lettuce and cheese, sour cream. Once the flathead bits are golden brown, they're ready to take out. I put down two pieces of paper towel onto a plate and that picks up all of the excess oil. Beautiful golden brown pieces. Now to make the taco. There's a bit of an art to this. Grab the soft tortilla and then what I'd like to do is use the guacamole as a bit of a glue, a bit of a base. Maybe think of it as the, the cement in the mix. It's going to help everything else stick. Then I place the fish down, making sure that there's enough room so that when you're going to close the tortilla later that it's going to make that nice taco shape. Add some lettuce. This salsa is really good. 
It's pineapple, coriander, red onion, a little bit of lime juice, and some chopped up cucumber. Add some really good flavors to this. Put some salsa on top. And some sour cream, which never wants to cooperate and always sticks to the spoon. And there you have it. Delicious looking taco, ready to eat. And surprising, one flathead goes a long way because you only need three small bits per taco. Alright, catch you next time. Hope you enjoyed.